Welcome to our lecture online. We're now ready to try our next example. Our function here is going to be 2x. We're going to do a line integral, 2x ds, and the lines is going to be in two parts. The first line is from the origin to this point right here, 1, 1, 2, and the second will start at 1, 1, 2 and go to 1, 2, 2. So what, what do we have here? Well, let's go look at our function. It's equal to 2x. So the height, if you think about it in terms of the z direction, only depends on x and not on y. So basically we have a slanted surface that comes out here as x increases, z increases twice as fast, but there's no change in the y direction. So you can see that's basically a flat sheet coming out into the x direction. When x equals 1, y equals, uh, z is equal to 2. When x equals 2, z is equal to 4. You can see here, as x becomes negative, z becomes negative as well, and no change in the y direction. So then the curve we're going to use to do the line integral with first starts at the origin and stops at x equals 1, y equals 1, and then the second curve is, equal, is a line that goes from x equals 1, y equals 1 to x equals 1, y equals 2. So there's only a change in the y direction. So we'll actually have to do two integrals, one for this curve and one for that curve. The two curves are defined right here. So the first one is a parabola, y equals x squared, and the second one, x equals 1. It's a straight line where x doesn't change, only y changes. You can see that these are the x and y coordinates of the points, ignoring the z coordinate, because z is simply part of this function right here. Now, how do we do that? Well, we go ahead and look at it and say we can probably do that in the Cartesian coordinate system. We let x equal x and y will be equal to x squared, which means that dy dx, dy dx is going to be equal to 2x, and dy is going to be 2x dx if you want to look at it that way. So now we go ahead and plug that into our integral. So our integral is now going to become 2 times x times ds, and ds is going to be defined as ds divided by dx, so we can write this as dx divided by the x quantity squared plus dy dx quantity squared, and that's where we need the dy dx from here, times dx. So ds dx is equal to this, so ds will be equal to this times dx. Now, what are the limits of integration? Well, notice our variable is going to be dx, and dx changes from x being equal to 0 to x being equal to 1. So our limits of integration are going to go from 0 to 1. Now we go, we go ahead and plug in what this is equal to. So this becomes equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x times the square root of, now dx dx, since x is equal to, let's see, dx dx, well that's just going to be 1, so that's 1 squared, so that's 1 plus dy dx is 2x squared, that becomes 4x quantity, whoop, I'll go ahead and put it like this, this is going to be 2x quantity squared, I got a little ahead of myself, times dx. All right, so that is equal to the integral from 2x from 0 to 1 times the square root of 1 plus 4x squared dx. Now, if we let u what's inside this, this radical here, then d would be 8 times x dx, and we have a 4, uh, we have a 2x dx. So we need an 8x dx, so we need to multiply this times 4 and divide by 4. So this gives us 4 times 2x, which is 8x dx, which is a differential of what's inside the radical, and we're not able to integrate that. So this becomes equal to 1 quarter times the quantity here, which is 1 plus 4x squared to the 3 halves power instead of 1 half power, divided by 3 halves, evaluated from 0 to 1, which is equal to, that would be 1 quarter times 2 thirds times the quantity 1 plus 4x squared to the 3 halves evaluated from 0 to 1. And now we're ready to plug in some limits here. So when we plug in the upper limit, we get 4 times 1 plus 1 is 5, and this simplifies to 1 sixth. So this becomes 1 sixth times 
plug in the upper limit, we get 1 plus 4, which is 5. Minus, when plug in the lower limit, we get 1. Oop, that was 5 to the 3 halves. Can't forget the 3 halves. Minus 1 to the 3 halves, which is simply equal to 1. And so, well, that's probably the best we can write. Or, if you like it, we can write this as uh, 1 sixth times 5 times the square root of 5 minus 1, if you like to see it like that. So, either way, that's the answer. So, that would be the area underneath this curve right here, from here to there. Now, that's only half the problem. Now we're going to integrate the second part. We're going to do the line integral of the same function, but now with C2. And C2 is defined where x is equal to 1. So that's this piece right here. x equal 1 means x does not change. So dx doesn't change. dx is equal to 0. So for our ds, this is our ds here, this goes away. And the only thing that's changing is y. So in essence, we can call ds dy. So our equation will now become as follows, or the integral. So for C2, the integral that we have up there now becomes the integral of 2 times x. But since x doesn't change, x is equal to 1, we can just plug a 1 in there. And ds, since there is no dx, ds then simply becomes dy. And dy is going to change from y equals 1 to y equals 2. So there are the limits of integration which is equal to 2 times the integral of dy from 1 to 2, which is equal to 2 times y, evaluate from 1 to 2, which is equal to 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 2. So that's the solution for the second part when we integrate from here to here. And the solution of the first part is equal to this quantity right here. Now, the square root of 5 is a little bit bigger than 2, so about 11, 10. That's about 1 and a half or 2. And this is another 2. So for the total, when we add the two together, we simply would add this quantity to this quantity to then account for the entire line integral from the origin to this point right there. And that's how it's done.